Good evening everyone, how's it going out there? Welcome back here to a Wednesday night, December 24th, 2025, Christmas Eve, 9.36 in the p.m. out here in California. We're gearing up for a uh, pretty significant swarm here, or a uh, storm tonight, pretty massive low pressure system set to come in. Take a look at earthquake activity though. Uh, latest quake here on the globe shows a 3.0 across the uh, Philippines area it looks like. That follows quite a bit of a larger movement here up around Taiwan recently. And uh, also some swarming going on around Guam. Some newer activity also stirring up here across the Kuro Kamchatka into the Japan region once again. Uh, starting off here though into Northern California. One earthquake that's just off the Mendocino triple point boundary from earlier this evening at 2.8. I was just looking at the Cascadia slow slip event map here and it does show that we have a little bit of uptick nothing big just a small amount of tremor being reported underneath the Oregon area 16 of them not that big of a deal uh, far as earthquake activity goes across the Bay Area a bunch of rain coming in still waiting to see how this is gonna uh, react uh, with all this rainfall could see some escalated uh, earthquake activity here soon. I mean, we've been seeing it for sure over the last couple of weeks. Uh, nothing big going on there for now across the Bay Area. Looking at Southern California, uh, a number of three pointers here today. Uh, that was up on the San uh, near the San Ramon area. Also, another three pointer right on the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. That earthquake about noon or so today. Also a 2.6 over here around Malibu, just off the Malibu Coast Fault. So things are starting to move. Definitely got uh, some activity stirring up here. Just kind of seeing what happens here with all this rainfall that's been falling across Southern California. They've been getting their fair share of rain as well. I'm sure it can't be good when it comes to the uh, fault systems out here as they're pretty well uh, stressed and strained. You put a whole bunch of rainfall <clears throat> and precipitation on those fault systems and the plate boundary itself, then we can start, you know, probably start getting things moving here. So just be on guard here. Again, that three-pointer was right smack dab on the San Andreas Fault. There's been a little cluster around here um, in the last 30 days, but this one's pretty much the biggest one. And it's, uh, again, it's right on that area southern portion of the San Andreas Fault. Uh, nothing major going on across the uh, rest of the uh, states here. A couple earthquakes out in the uh, Oklahoma area and the oil fields. Nothing showing up here on Yellowstone. Of course, it is a holiday, so it's not that earthquakes aren't happening. It's just that uh, none are being reported out here. So we'll double check the Yellowstone uh, USGS volcano site here, the Webby quarters, the recorded ones, and see what's going on. There's a little small earthquake here maybe a, a handful more out there but i don't see uh, any significant swarm going on no unusual activity in fact it looks it looks pretty quiet there across yellowstone national park super volcano for now all right uh look at that trail of activity down here across the uh tonga trench bunch of fours what all do they have in common well they're all deep into that subduction zone there uh, the deepest one being 384 miles deep. Had a massive amount of activity down here recently. Um, this may be leading to something bigger uh, around the area. We've uh, it's just been a little bit above average in terms of the multitude of counts out here. A lot of deeper earthquakes, more, more so than normal. Uh, so I would watch this area closely. Not so much going on across New Zealand for now. Uh, let's see, there's a Guam activity. Pretty good cluster across the uh, Philippine Trench southward. Nothing big happening aside from, you know, just a typical cluster there, though. It's a little bit more elevated than normal. Um, let's see here, a little bit of activity out. Uh, where's that four pointer at? Looks like that's somewhere out here. Um, probably in this uh, Red Sea area is what I'm guessing. Maybe off of there to the uh, to the west here, maybe around Egypt. A little earthquake showing in, uh, showing up there for a 4.1. So 
Aside from that, look at the Atlantic starting to stir up out here again. Getting um, a pair of earthquakes north and south of Iceland. This is all some newer activity. Uh, this was a lot different looking this morning when we were doing the update. So newer activity stirring up north. This is a spreading seafloor center, rift boundary up here. That normally adds further stress and strain across this area. And obviously, <laughs> you can see it, right? These are kind of a, a light red color, light pink color, indicating some older activity, but not, not really old. Because this happened, uh, you know, after my update this morning. And then all the newer activity out here since then. So things are on the increase out here uh, quite a bit. You can see all these uh, newer quakes here across the area. Just be on guard. Got uh, some decent movement happening out there. Uh, let's see here. The rest of the area looks pretty quiet or typical. We got this 4.3 here fairly deep. It looks like that may be associated with the Ecuador uh, area or the Colombia region. 100 miles underneath this area. There's a couple different subduction zones here and uh, up here as well, but pretty deep earthquake. Alaska, uh, is there really anything going on? You know, someone asked me to cover Alaska more, and we definitely do cover Alaska quite a bit. Uh, but Alaska, similar to California here, you know, they're, they're always getting these microquakes up here. As far as the 2.5 model and above, not a whole lot. Still seeing some aftershock activity there from that 7-pointer a number of weeks back. But I don't see any unusual activity. I, I would definitely point it out. Uh, I'm still, you know looking at this area along the Gulf of Alaska here the Aleutian Trench for some for some potential larger activity um, with with what's been happening out here all around it recently you know a lot of activity west here the more recent uh, seven pointer up here and then Anchorage had a, a six pointer recently as well it's definitely advisable to watch this area here of the subduction zone uh, nothing big happening on it for now, but uh, had a little bit of time that's passed there since uh, we've had a big event. A couple earthquakes there across the Aleutian Trench. Uh, Hawaii uh, got a decent amount of earthquake activity underneath here. Of course, the uh, episode 39 came to a halt abruptly early, early this morning. Um, well, that's going to continue to go back up towards episode 40 here and a number of... Uh, Quite a few days before that happens, but we're still getting a lot of activity underneath the Big Island here, mainly across the southeastern edge, and that's definitely uh, noticeable here on the last 30 days. Quite a big uh, uptick going on. Uh, space weather activity. See if anything's going on here on the sun. Not uh, seeing too much activity. In fact, we're just hovering around the C and B flare category. We do have uh, a couple different sunspots here that I'm kind of watching. Uh, this one down here looks like it's popped up a little bit more as far as dynamic complexity. Um, let's see here. Maybe this area up here as well looks like it's starting to go through a little re-strengthening phase there. And there's just, the you can just barely see the leading edge of this massive sunspot area. Um, that is returning sunspot. Ooh, what's their names? Because they it was that massive sunspot group that was out here weeks ago. Remember, it was just giant. Nothing really happened from it, but it was, it was quite impressive in terms of coverage area. Uh, that was, um, I can't remember the names, 42-something, 4296 or so. Anyway, it's the uh, returning sunspots there. Oh, there we go, 4296 and 4394. That's been that same sunspot that's come around a number of times. Kevin's keeping track of that. But anyway, that it it was much bigger last time uh, it was out here on the Earth-facing side. Now, it um, you know it's hard to say. Uh, looking at the complexity model here, the latest imagery, it's I really don't have a full view yet of the entire sunspot, so it's hard to tell if it's going to be active or not in terms of you know producing any uh, solar flare activity but we'll continue to watch that as it comes into a more earth directed view right now flare threat still sits at 30 percent chance there for an m flare x flare around five percent chance or so uh, no major roars there in the forecast for now
California. I want to show you guys the Goes West uh, satellite here. This is an incredible um, low pressure system that's starting to develop out here. A lot of lightning and thunder here around the Chico area tonight. Quite a bit. Seen some heavy, heavy duty rainfall as well. Here's a developing low pressure system that's going to come in tonight. It is really going to pour down tonight here, folks, in the Sacramento Valley. So we're expecting some heavy rainfall. Winds up around 60, well, 50 miles an hour or so in the Sacramento Valley. Uh, but there's there's a lot of instability out there that's still popping up with that low pressure. And that's going to all come in tonight uh, for Northern California. There it is as well. I want to check out the wind gust and show you guys the wind speeds out here. Zoom in to uh, my neck of the woods. Everything starts to really ramp up about 3 o'clock in the morning or so. Uh, winds around the Chico area expected to be up above 50 miles an hour. Uh, maybe up around Red Bluff or so higher. Uh, let's see what those are up there. About 63 or so. Either way, it's going to be yeah, it's going to be a windy night. I lost power this morning around 5 o'clock. I've been up since, and I went to bed late last night, so I really didn't get much sleep. Uh, but I had to get up here and take care of a few things when the power was down. Uh, more than likely, it will probably go down again tonight with these strong winds. In fact, it looks a little bit stronger tonight. Uh, as far as the wind coverage out here goes, than it than it uh, did last night, uh, and then when you mix in the you know the moisture that we received, everything is soaked out here. It's like it's like um, yeah, you know, it's it's a bad setup for broad power outages. You get that heavy wind coming in with the ground already being soaked, and you get trees knocking over power lines going down uh, it's probably going to happen again tonight here and that's all about three o'clock in the morning so i'm going to go to bed here right after this update and hope that i can get a little bit of sleep um some decent uh <laughs> decent wind there along the coastline but either way we're all going to get uh, some some heavy duty stuff coming in tonight it's going to be a wet very wet christmas out here and crazy snow conditions up there as well, up into the uh, up into the higher elevation. Let's take a look here at the new snow. Uh, it goes to Thursday. Next couple days, we're talking about feet of snow up there. I mean, up around Chester and Mount Lassen area, quite a bit of snow. Um, that shows 39 inches, but it could be locally higher across some of the uh, elevated areas. Either way, folks, um, the live stream will be up and running uh, regardless if the power goes down or not. Uh, my off-grid system did a good job this morning. Uh, when the power went down, it kept uh, kept it up and going. And I could run a, a good amount of time there just on my battery power uh, generator for the live stream. I got the internet hooked up to it. I got the computers, everything hooked up to it. And, of course, um, some household stuff uh, gets sent to it as well when the power goes down. But... Anyway, it's a good, good little investment. So the stream will be up regardless. Um, we'll see you guys out here in the morning for the Christmas morning update. I will definitely be out here. Uh, we'll probably shoot for around 8 o'clock or so, maybe 9 o'clock for the uh, uh, morning update. Have yourself a wonderful evening, folks. Uh, Merry Christmas to everyone that celebrates it. We'll see you guys out here in the morning. Stay safe.